Hello everybody. We're talking about the resurrection reality of God, which Jesus demonstrated in his resurrection from the dead and how that resurrection from the dead is a reality in us. Because as 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, for the love of Christ motivates us, compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. Now why is the love of Christ compelling us or moving us? Well, it's his resurrection life moving us. It's his resurrection life in me, which is moving me to demonstrate and communicate to you that all have died in him. My death has taken place. Your death has taken place. And we have now been raised with him in newness of life, in resurrection life. And this is true, ultimate reality. And as we declare this, this is being unveiled within our own beings as we discover Christ in us, the resurrected man. There is a resurrection chamber, a resurrection dimension in our inner beings. Because as Paul says, the mystery of God, the riches of the mystery of God are revealed, openly revealed now among the nations. That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So as we look in the Old Testament, God manifested himself openly throughout the Old Testament. He would come down in the temple in a cloud of glory, a supernatural cloud of glory. And the priests were unable to function or to minister because of the intensity of the glory and presence and wonder of God as the supernatural world manifested openly. But the good news is for us, we are in a far more superior covenant. Because the covenant we're in, Christ is now in us. That glory cloud that manifested on the outer physical temple is now manifesting in you, in glorious resurrection life. And this is a now reality. This is not something for the future. This is what the Holy Spirit's all about, awakening us as resurrection power activates our inner being and raises us from the dead internally, where we become spiritually aware, spiritually activated with our inner spiritual body, the resurrection body functioning as we see with the eyes of our spirit, as we hear with our spiritual ears, as we function in the resurrection realm as in the resurrection dimension where Christ is, in which we live. Now, I want you to think about when Lazarus died in the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Lazarus had been dead for four days. He was already in the tomb. He already had the grave clothes wrapped around him. It's like a shroud where, where, they, where they used to wrap the people in this uh, cloth and placed in the tomb with a stone put across it. So Jesus arrives four days late. Lazarus was already dead for four days. And Martha came out to meet Lazarus, to meet Jesus. Martha came out to meet Jesus on the road and informing Jesus that his friend Lazarus is dead. If he had only come earlier, he would have been raised Jesus could have healed him. And she was crying and said, Jesus, if you had only come earlier, we, we could have saved Lazarus. He wouldn't have died. And Jesus made this very interesting statement. I am the resurrection of the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Let me go to it, actually. It's in John chapter 11. So verse 21, it says, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. 
Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now, what happens next is very interesting. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. This is not something for the last day or some point in the future. This is a now reality. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. So Jesus is bringing the actual present, the reality of resurrection life into that present moment. And how many today play religious tiddlywinks, play religious games, always looking for some great event in the future where God's going to come and wipe out all his enemies and restore creation and take all the Christians off in a cloud somewhere and heaven and they're all going to float around on, on clouds playing harps. No, Jesus is the resurrection and the life and he is a present reality right now, right here in you. Because this is why Jesus said to his disciples, it is better that I go away. Because if I go away, then I will come to you. I will send my spirit and he will be in you. And when the spirit of God, when you're baptized in the spirit, when you're saturated in the spirit of God, you're saturated in fire and resurrection life and your inner being is raised from the dead in the same way, in the same manner that Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus was raised from the dead physically by the Holy Spirit rising him with eternal resurrection power, entering into his body and actually rising, raising him back up. And we walk in the same reality. So when Paul the apostle preached, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He meant the resurrected Christ in you, the hope of glory. The resurrection life of Christ in you, the hope of glory. He wasn't just uh, espousing or, or giving out some nice philosophical ideas that you have some sort of divinity in you or some sort of... Uh, eternal nature in you, but you can't actually experience any of the reality of it. No, he was, he was broadcasting an actual present reality that resurrection life is indeed in you. Christ, the resurrected one. So there is a resurrection reality in you, a resurrection dimension in you. But it isn't meant to just be something that's hidden in you. It's something that is to be unveiled First to your own consciousness, as you begin to connect with who you really are in the reality of your inner being, walking in identification with Christ. Because look folks, he identified with us in our corruption, in our brokenness, in our sense of separation, in our sense of sin, whatever words you wanna use, whatever went wrong with this world, God in his great love demonstrated his love for us by entering in and becoming one of us in our alienation, in our pain, in our corruption, in our death. And he took that corruption and death and sense of separation into death when he was crucified on the cross. And he conquered death in us. He conquered corruption in us. He conquered the sense of separation in us in order that we would know what it is to share in his nature, his divine nature. When you think of uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, His divine power has given us everything for life and go for godliness through our knowledge of Him, so that we would share in His very great and precious promises. And uh, so that we would share, that we partake of His very great and precious promises, sharing in His divine nature and escaping the corruption in the world that's caused through lust. Escaping corruption. How can you escape corruption? Well, identifying with the fact that you share in the divine nature, which is in you, that incorruptible, indestructible 
dimension. Christ in you. And as I, for one, broadcast this glorious message, I'm not just speaking out of a philosophy here or a nice idea. I'm speaking out of the reality of what has been opened up within me. The fire and glory of the Spirit of God as the Spirit of God has unveiled my conscious awareness to the reality of this glorious resurrection realm. And this glorious resurrection realm is actually in expanding within us and quickening our mortal bodies to be like His glorious body as we walk in pure resurrection life, radiating divinity, radiating life, because we share in His divine nature, as it says very clearly in 2 Peter chapter 1. We share in His divine nature in order that we would escape the corruption in the world caused through lust. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means we have to identify with something in God. Our identity is found in this divine nature, God's nature, the resurrection life. But if we continue to identify, oh, I'm just a corrupt, fallen, broken human being, and Jesus is going to save me someday when I die and go to heaven. Well, you aren't truly bowing your knee to the glorious reality of Christ in you. To Jesus the Savior, the, the, the name Jesus means God saves. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess the name of Jesus, which means God saves. God is opening our eyes that He truly has saved us. He has conquered death in you. Will you identify with Him today, now, and recognize that He is the resurrection and the life? He is your resurrection and your life. What a wonderful reality. He is your resurrection. He is your life. That life pulsates in you, radiates in you, flowing like a living water bubbling up within you, streaming into your consciousness, streaming into your heart, causing your heart to be made whole, causing you to discover who you really are. You're not a, dysfun you may, you're not a dysfunctional human being. You may have brokenness. You may have suffered many things in your past, and you may be doing many things that are causing you suffering right now. But as you begin to discover who you are and the fact that you are intensely and deeply loved by God and God is committed to you discovering this wonderful goodness and grace that he has for you and he's committed to you discovering the reality of who you are in your inner being and this reality that exists within you is very stable. It doesn't change. It's a non-changing dimension within you. You may change in your mind. You may go through storms in your emotions. You, go, you may go through brokenness in your body. But the reality of Christ in you is a constant reality of continual, complete, and full love. Not just in a concept of love, but in substantial love, which is the, for the healing of your entire being and personality and body. It's an ever-increasing kingdom of love and power and restoration in you. And as we discover this within our own lives, obviously it streams out into to the world around us, to the people around us, and to the nations around us. This is for the healing of the nations. This is why we broadcast this glorious message. He is the resurrection and the life in us. Now, when we read this story about Lazarus being raised from the dead and Jesus encountering Martha and Jesus basically saying, I am the resurrection. If you believe now, you will see the glory of God, not some point in the future. Jesus then moves on to the actual tomb of Lazarus. And it says, verse 38 of John chapter 11, Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb. It was a cave with a, stone a lot, with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha. You see, Martha still doesn't believe. <laughs> but Lord, said Martha, 
the sister of the dead man. By this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there for four days. Now, just earlier, when Jesus had met Martha, she said, oh, I know he'll rise. And then Jesus says to her, she says, yes, I'll know he'll rise on the last day. And then Jesus, Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes will not die. Do you believe this? Did I not tell you that if you believe, now you will see the glory of God? Uh, and she said, yes, Lord. Now she's actually been confronted with the tomb. She's been confronted with the actual death. She's, we're not just talking to ideas inside someone's head now. We're confronted with a real physical thing, a real dead man, a real tomb, right? And Martha is still not really believing because she said, but Lord, <laughs> right? But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor. In other words, he stinks. He's been dead for four days and he's just decaying and rotten and it's just putrid. Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? I am the resurrection and the life. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come out. Wow. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Then Jesus said to them, take the grave clothes off and let him go. Oh, wow. Glory to God. Magnificent. Take the grave clothes off. And that's what we're doing right now. I'm taking the grave clothes, I'm taking my own grave clothes off as I discover that Jesus is the resurrection and the life in me. I pulsate with glory and radiate with divine life. From my inner being as that resurrection river comes forth and I'm taking the grave clothes off you as I declare to you this glorious message that you are in resurrection life. Not some point in the future, but in an actual now reality, right now, as we're confronted with the challenges of life, as we're confronted with the grave clothes that bind us and hold us down, as we're confronted with our own tomb, our own death, we stand and declare that we carry resurrection life and we walk in resurrection life. This is wonderful glory. This is wonderful. What we are right now, we're learning to help each other to take the grave clothes off. We're taking our own grave clothes off as we identify with who we are in Christ and what God has given us. That we truly share in his divine nature. We share in his resurrection life. The old reality of who we are is really just grave clothes. We're just taking off the grave clothes. We're unwrapping the shroud to let the actual glory of God radiate out of us and shine forth in fullness of splendor, bringing healing to ourselves and restoration to ourselves as we walk in our full union and sonship with God. Death has been defeated. Jesus defeated death in us when he died on the cross and was put in that tomb, and he rose from the dead. He totally defeated death. And the resurrection is a present reality for all human beings, for all humanity. And this is what we broadcast, resurrection life, not just in word, but in power and demonstration as the river of glory roars out of our inner being. And there is a river of glory, a river of resurrection roaring within you at the thunder, at the roar of his waterfalls. Deep calls on to deep, at the roar of his waterfalls. From faith to faith and glory to glory, deep calls on to deep. Dive deep into the glory of God. Project it, share it, identify with it, because that is who we are. This is not a time to be playing religious games tiddlywinks in church. This is a time to walk in identification with who, are, who we are, putting off the old man and walking in the reality. This is not a game, brothers and sisters. This is life. And the creation needs life. We've been sent to set 
creation free from its bondage to decay and to project and radiate gl this glorious nature, His nature, which we are in full identification with. He identified fully with us in our brokenness, in our corruption. And in so doing, He identified us fully with Himself in His resurrection life and divine nature. Again, it says in 2 Corinthians, 2 uh, Peter chapter 1, we share in his divine nature in order that we would escape the corruption in the world caused through lust. Wow! What a truly glorious reality. We share. We identify. We are in it. We are it. Now, we're not it in a separate sense from God. I'm not divine in a separate sense from God. I am intrinsically joined to Him. He joined me with Himself. So this is not a, an arrogant thing where we're walking around saying, oh, I'm God. No. Grace and God's goodness and God's love doesn't cause you to be arrogant. It causes you to be a whole human being with a, with a sound mind, with a heart of love, with a, a spirit of peace within you, where you don't need to prove anything to anybody because you just are in him and you just radiate his life. Wow, what wonder, what glory, what magnificence. What wonder, what glory, what magnificence. <laughs> we are glory machines. We are resurrection projectors. We are radiators of life. People are healed of cancer, AIDS, any kind of viruses, because death has been conquered in us and we radiate this glorious life, bringing the reality to other people's consciousness that death has been conquered in them. You see, Jesus conquered death in every man because he tasted death for every man. Jesus died the death of every man and has provided life in every man, resurrection life. He is the resurrection and the life and the divine nature of every man. Every man shares in his divine nature. But if they don't know about it, if they're still living in the mistaken memory of corruption, identifying themselves as broken, fallen, and separate, how can they partake of this reality? Well, we're going to have to broadcast it. We're going to have to broadcast it. We're going to have to radiate it into the universe, into this world, and let people know. And this is what I'm doing. And at that note, I'm going to finish now. And I want to give you an opportunity to give into this ministry financially, enabling me to go and to share this message to greater degrees. Because as we give, we receive. This message, this grace is given freely and the kingdom of God operates on giving and receiving. So give into this ministry. Allow yourself to express the grace that you've received, firstly in financial giving, because that helps me to do what God has told me and put in my heart and given me to do. So thank you for listening, guys. You'll, you'll find some sort of link on whatever platform you're viewing this, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, you'll find some sort of link in the description or on my profile page, or contact me to find out how you can give. But it is important that you do so and give freely out of the generosity and life that you've received in this incorruptible life and grace that is now residing in you as a free gift. You are truly rich in God with his grace, with the exceeding riches of his grace. So thank you for listening, guys. See you next time. Awesome.